John chapter 14. Yes, sir. Listen to the Lord Jesus in verse number one. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. We're ready to go on to verse 2, but we need to read verse 1 again. Let not your heart be what? What's the opposite of being troubled? I said, what's the opposite of being troubled? Peace, joy, rejoicing. He says, don't. Be troubled. Yes. Rejoice. Rejoice. How am I going to do that, Master? You believe in God. Yes. Believe also in me. Yes. He's, he's trying to tell him that he's about to go away. He says, just because I go away, you don't see me. Believe in God. Yes. Believe also in me. Yes. When I go away, your heart's going to want to be troubled. Yes. When things around you says, be troubled, you, everything around you that you're looking at is going to say, be sad. Yes. Be mad, be upset, be afraid, but let not your heart be troubled. Don't let your heart be affected by your sight. I said, don't let your heart be affected by your sight. Time out, say time out. I gotta put this in here. Now, one of the things we're gonna have to learn as believers, we're gonna have to stop allowing our bodies our senses to influence our faith. And we're going to stop, have to stop allowing our mind to influence our faith. And we're going to have to start allowing our faith to influence our mind. And our faith to influence our bodies. The Apostle Paul says in Romans chapter 12 and verse 3, he says, he says, be not high-minded, but be sober-minded. Be sober-minded. Don't think more highly of yourself than you ought to think. But according as God has dealt to every man the measure of it. He says, don't think highly, too highly of yourself than you ought to think but according to the faith that's been measured to you. He says, allow your thinking to be controlled by the faith given to you. Don't allow your thinking to be controlled by what you see. And certainly don't allow your faith to be controlled by what you think. But let your faith control what you think. People so many times say, I don't think I'm delivered. And so they stop believing they're delivered. Their bodies say, I'm sick and and weaken. I'm never going to make it. But you're letting, letting your body control what you believe. And you're not allowing what you believe control what you think and how you feel. This is the, this is the key to walking with God. The key to walking with God is being transformed in your mind. It's not to be led by your head, but to be led by your heart. So many times I've preached to people and they have the word in their heart. Yes. All in their heart is like, I want to love God. I want to serve God. But they let their mind talk them out of it. Yes. They let their mind talk them out of it. Yes. These are people who are head led. Yes. But not led by their heart. Yes. They're not led by the faith. Yes. Faith is not in your head. Right. It's not in your body. It's in your heart. Yes. For with the heart man believes. Yes. The, it's not going to be in your head. Yes. Sometimes it's not going to make sense. He says, lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him, and he will go. Again, don't be head led. Be led by your heart. And, and many times joy will be right there in your heart, and you're sitting in the pew, some of you, and God's, the Holy Ghost is stirring up on the inside. You need to be glad. You ain't got no reason to be sad. You need to be rejoicing, but you let your head talk you out of it. Well, but you ain't worried about this, and, and what's going to happen tomorrow? Let, your, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. How am I going to rejoice? Let not your heart be troubled, but believe. What are Romans chapter 15? I'm saying to you that rejoicing is a result of believing. If you believe right, you rejoice right. 
I said, if you believe right, you'll rejoice right. You're not rejoicing right. You got no verbal expression, no appropriate body movement because you're not believing right. Hallelujah. When you believe right, it affects your body. When you believe right, it affects your mind. When you believe right, it affects your confession. In fact, the Apostle Paul says in, in 2 Corinthians, he says, I believe, therefore I speak. Yes. Woo. Anybody that's not speaking is not believing. You can't believe and it don't come out of your mouth. James says, I'll show you my faith by my works. Faith without works is dead. Be it alone. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 15. Romans chapter 15. I'm, I know I'm screaming, but I'm teaching. Yeah, don't pay no attention to the scream. I'm teaching. We need some deliverance. We need to be taught. You can't bring the philosophies of the world in here and think you're going to be successful in the kingdom of God. You've got to transform the whole, your whole way of thinking. I'm not going to let my head control how I believe. I'm going to let my heart control my head. I'm going to let my heart tell my head what to do. What's in your heart? Glory. Let not your heart. Somebody say, let not your heart. Be troubled. Some people feel like they're just at the, at, they're just, their heart and their emotion can do whatever it wants to do. They're at the mercy of their emotions. I can't stop it. I don't know what to do. He says, let not your heart be changed. He says, you have the control over your heart. you got the control over your body. you got the control over your mind. He says in Romans chapter 6, he says, let not sin reign in your body. Stop letting those things reign in your body. He says, casting down imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing him to cap every thought to the earth. You're the policeman of your mind. Stop looking for the pastor to police your mind. Stop looking for missionary, but can you help me know? You are supposed to bring your thoughts captive to the earth. Say, I can do it. He says, I give you power over all the power of the enemy. I give you power over all the power of the enemy. We've been set free and we act like slaves. He says you've been high and lifted up above principality and power. And every name that is named. Stop letting the devil rule you. He's usurping authority. You've got the authority. Say this is my mind. This is my body. start getting afraid, I start telling myself, you ain't going to be afraid. You're going to be calm. You're going to be glad. Romans chapter 15. Romans chapter 15. Romans chapter 15, verse 13. Now, the God of all hope, fill you with all joy and peace in what? In doubting. In doubting. In fearing. God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in what? Who's going to put the joy in your heart? God will in response to your believing. Yes. If you get to believe in God, will put the joy inside there. Yes. That's why it's a joy unspeakable. Yes. It's not from this planet. Yes. It's from outer space. It's from another dimension. Yes. This joy you can't describe with human words because it's not human. It's supernatural. Yes. Hallelujah. It comes straight from God. He said, the God of hope will fill you not with some joy. All joy. And peace. In what? Believing. Oh, how many would like that? How many would like joy from God? How many would like supernatural joy? He will give you joy if you get to believe it. Start believing it's God's job to put the joy in you. And so many people trying to have joy. All you got to do is concentrate on believing. He'll give you the joy. It's like people trying to get healed. You don't have to get healed. All you got to do is get in faith. See, you're trying the wrong thing. And this, is, and this is what they do when we're ministering. We think the power is coming from us. So we do a run and start. And we're, we're tag teaming. You next. Tag. Go in. Oh, it, ain't, it ain't in your streets. The apostle Peter says, why are you looking on us as some great thing is about us? Like there's some great power and some holiness. The thing that you saw wrought in your midst, it was wrought by the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
joy is supernatural. And according to this verse, it's a work of the Spirit. It goes on to say that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. We're looking for power. We're looking for Holy Ghost power. But one of the manifestations of Holy Ghost power is joy. I said one of the manifestations of Holy Ghost power is joy. When the Holy Spirit is a manifestation in a believer's life, it will manifest in joy. That's a manifestation of the Holy Ghost. That joy you got, he says, peace I leave with you. This peace, I, it doesn't come from the world. My peace, I give to you. And I like that. He says, my peace. This is the same peace he got when he was in the when he was in the, in, the, in the Garden of Gethsemane, yeah. just before he was facing his crucifixion, yeah. the Bible says that sweat, like great drops of blood, fell from his face. He said, Father, let this cup pass from me, yet not my will, let your will be done. And he had to pray that prayer three times. Yeah. Anybody ever had to pray a prayer more than once? I know some of you are so, so holy, so anointed. You just pray one time and you get every answer. But some folks like myself have to pray more than one time. Jesus had to say, not my will. Thy will be done. Oh, I better go back at it again because I see my will come up. Not my will. Thy will be done. Then he looked for help from his friends and they over there sleeping. So he, he went back to his knees. And again, to pray again, Lord, I want you to lift this burden off of me. Lift this agony off of me. Oh, but he came back a third time. And he looked at his disciples and says, sleep on. I don't need you now. I don't got the victory. And he says, I'm now in the peace. And he says, this peace I give. Oh, oh my gosh. All the sins of mankind was being placed on this man. He was about to go to the most excruciating death known to man. Can you imagine the terror? Can you imagine the fear that fell on him? But he got an anointing. I said he got a demonstration of the Holy Ghost. The peace from God lifted his spirits. And he says, this I give to you. There ain't no trouble you can find yourself in. There is no persecution you can find yourself in. There is no trial you can find yourself in that the power of the Holy Spirit in the demonstration of peace and joy can't lift you out of it. See, I know what we're doing. We're selling for, for, for lesser forms of peace. We're selling for lesser forms of joy. But if we get to believe it, he says, the God of all hope will fill you. Not just give you a taste or a treat, but it will fill you with joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Ghost. We know it's a work of the Spirit because Galatians 5 says, and the fruits of the Spirit are these, love, and what's that? Joy. This is a fruit of the Spirit, a manifestation of the Spirit in a believer's life. I see why we're having a trouble rejoicing in the unseen because we're not filled with the Holy Ghost. I said we're not filled with the Holy Ghost. Go with me to Ephesians chapter 5. Hallelujah. I mean, I don't even know how to attack this sermon. I'm just going all over the place. Am I blessing anybody in here? Is anybody taking courage? Is anybody making up in your mind today? No matter what I see, I'm going to maintain my joy. I'm going to maintain my appropriate body movements. I'm going to maintain my appropriate verbal expressions. Some folks said, I, be I believe God, but everything come out of their mouth is not according to faith. They say, I believe God, but all their body movements. You know, I read somewhere that 80% of communication is nonverbal. I said 80% of communication is non 
Durable. 